In this webcast, we're going to examine the formation of osozones from carbohydrates in mechanistic detail. Although this reaction is not as relevant for structural determination of monosaccharides as it used to be, we'll see that the elementary steps that comprise osozone formation are typical for monosaccharides. In addition, sugars react in a similar manner with amino acids under the conditions of cooking. A famous example of this is the Maillard reaction. Osozone formation occurs when a monosaccharide is exposed to three equivalents of phenylhydrazine, the molecule you see here. The mechanism that we draw for this process needs to account for the interesting side products observed, ammonia, aniline, and two equivalents of water. We also need to account for the apparent oxidation that takes place at carbon-2. Notice that it goes from possessing one CH bond in glucose to having no CH bonds and an additional CN bond in the product. To begin, you should recognize phenylhydrazine as a potent nucleophile and the carbonyl carbon of glucose as a good electrophile. Like related amines, phenylhydrazine can condense with the carbonyl group to form a compound containing a new C in double bond. We call this particular functional group, which possesses both a C in double bond and a nitrogen nitrogen single bond, a hydrozone. Like carbonyl compounds, Hydrozones are acidic at the alpha position and are able to undergo a tautomerization process which shifts a hydrogen atom from the alpha carbon to nitrogen and shifts the double bond from nitrogen to the alpha carbon. Because the starting hydrazine is a base and is present in excess, it's able to catalyze this process. After tautomerization, we see that an intermediate has formed containing a carbon-carbon double bond with one CO bond and one CN bond attached to the two carbons of the double bond. We can draw an analogy between this intermediate and the ene diolate observed under base promoted isomerization conditions. Like the ene diolate, this intermediate is basic and nucleophilic at both carbon atoms and protonation at the carbon alpha to the alcohol group, that is, the former hydrozone carbon, gives a ketone. You may notice that the mechanism up to this point is analogous to the base-mediated isomerization we saw earlier. In fact, the only difference is that a hydrozone has replaced the starting aldehyde group. A new carbonyl group appears at carbon-2 after the tautomerization. Hydrozone formation at this new carbonyl may occur, and we see that we've achieved the necessary oxidation at carbon-2. With the hydrozone at carbon-2, carbon-1 is now acidic, because it's alpha to the hydrozone. Under the influence of base, elimination produces an imine at the terminal carbon. Notice that the leaving group of this elimination is aniline, one of our observed side products. Imine hydrolysis, which is the reverse of imine formation, gives an aldehyde and gaseous ammonia, yet another side product. Finally, the third equivalent of hydrazine condenses with the aldehyde to reestablish the terminal hydrozone group. The mechanism of this hydrozone formation is identical to the mechanism of the first hydrozone formation that we saw. Overall, in osozone formation, we see the monosaccharide acting as an electrophile and an acid in the presence of a reagent that we would expect to be both nucleophilic and basic. Each step of the mechanism we described involves one or more of the elementary steps of organic chemistry. And although the transformation is complex, we can break it down into a series of sensible elementary steps.